1. How will the man travel to the city centre? Excuse me, what's the best way to get to the city centre? Well, it's probably easiest to take a taxi, especially if you've got a lot of luggage. I've just got a light bag. Is there a bus that goes there? Yes, there is, but it takes quite a long route. What about the underground? It's a short walk from here and the trains go every ten minutes. It'd be faster than a taxi. That sounds perfect. I'll do that. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Now listen again. Excuse me, what's the best way to get to the city centre? Well, it's probably easiest to take a taxi, especially if you've got a lot of luggage. I've just got a light bag. Is there a bus that goes there? Yes, there is, but it takes quite a long route. What about the underground? It's a short walk from here and the trains go every ten minutes. It'd be faster than a taxi. That sounds perfect. I'll do that. Thanks so much for your help. No problem. Two. What did the girl dislike at the hostel she stayed in? How was your holiday? Good. The hostel was OK, but not great. Uh, I've heard about problems with mice in some of the hostels in the area you visited. Really? Well, they've obviously done something about that. The thing was, our beds didn't have mosquito nets, so we got bitten almost every night even after putting on insect cream. Right. And then every morning we heard monkeys running across the roof. I didn't mind that at all, though. It was like being in a hostel in the jungle. Now listen again. How was your holiday? Good. The hostel was OK, but not great. Ah. Uh. I've heard about problems with mice in some of the hostels in the area you visited. Really? Well, they've obviously done something about that. The thing was, our beds didn't have mosquito nets, so we got bitten almost every night, even after putting on insect cream. Right. And then every morning we heard monkeys running across the roof. I didn't mind that at all, though. It was like being in a hostel in the jungle. Three. What is the man going to order for lunch? What are you going to order then? Mm, let me see. I think I'd like the salmon. You're so boring. I knew you'd say fish. You never try anything different. I'm having pizza. They make them really thin and tasty here. Yes, my sister had one last time we ate here. She said it was great. How about the curry? That's excellent, I believe. Mm, nice idea, but I've heard it's very spicy. I've made up my mind. I'll have what I always have. <laughs> of course. Now listen again. What are you going to order then? Mm, let me see. I think I'd like the salmon. You're so boring. I knew you'd say fish. You never try anything different. I'm having pizza. They make them really thin and tasty here. Yes, my sister had one last time we ate here. She said it was great. How about the curry? That's excellent, I believe. Mm, nice idea, but I've heard it's very spicy. I've made up my mind. I'll have what I always have. <laughs> of course. Four. What sport would the woman like to try? I've decided to take up a new sport. There are lots of classes starting at the sports centre near the golf course. What sport are you thinking of doing? Well, I did consider golf. When I looked at the cost, though, I realised it's way more than I can afford. Anyway, I'm not that good at racket sports, but I wouldn't mind giving badminton a go. You need to be so strong to play tennis. I might do a new sports class too. 
Hey, come along with me. Now listen again. I've decided to take up a new sport. There are lots of classes starting at the sports centre near the golf course. What sport are you thinking of doing? Well, I did consider golf. When I looked at the cost, though, I realised it's way more than I can afford. Anyway, I'm not that good at racket sports, but I wouldn't mind giving badminton a go. You need to be so strong to play tennis. I might do a new sports class too. Hey, come along with me. Five. Which book is the man reading? What's the book you're reading about? It's a novel by one of my favourite writers. A lot of his books are based on his experiences flying planes around the world. This one's set at sea, a guy who crosses the Pacific Ocean on his own and all the challenges he has to deal with. I've heard he's working on a new one at the moment about an astronaut who goes to the moon and can't get back. It sounds interesting. Anyway, this one's really exciting. Sounds cool. Now listen again. What's the book you're reading about? It's a novel by one of my favourite writers. A lot of his books are based on his experiences flying planes around the world. This one's set at sea, a guy who crosses the Pacific Ocean on his own and all the challenges he has to deal with. I've heard he's working on a new one at the moment about an astronaut who goes to the moon and can't get back. It sounds interesting. Anyway, this one's really exciting. Sounds cool. Six. Where does the man suggest going at the weekend? Hi, Sue. It's Matt. Thanks for your message. I think it's a great idea to go out for the day at the weekend. You mentioned going for a walk on the beach. I've just looked at the weather forecast, though, and there might be a storm coming. There's a new art exhibition on at the museum, definitely worth seeing, or so I've heard. I wondered about going to the cinema and had a look at what's on. There's nothing very exciting this weekend. Anyway, let me know what you think. Bye. Now listen again. Hi, Sue. It's Matt. Thanks for your message. I think it's a great idea to go out for the day at the weekend. You mentioned going for a walk on the beach. I've just looked at the weather forecast, though, and there might be a storm coming. There's a new art exhibition on at the museum. Definitely worth seeing, or so I've heard. I wondered about going to the cinema and had a look at what's on. There's nothing very exciting this weekend. Anyway, let me know what you think. Bye. Seven. How much is the latest smartphone in the store today? At ABC's phone store, we've got some fantastic offers this week. For an amazing £599, the most up-to-date smartphone is now available. It's got a great camera and the biggest memory ever. But hurry, this offer is only on for a few days. If you wait till Monday, it'll be back to its usual price of £699. If either of these prices is more than you can afford, there's always last year's model, which is just £499. But don't delay. When they're gone, they're gone. Come early to avoid disappointment. Now listen again. At ABC's phone store, we've got some fantastic offers this week. For an amazing £599, the most up-to-date smartphone is now available. It's got a great camera and the biggest memory ever. But hurry, this offer is only on for a few days. If you wait till Monday, 
it'll be back to its usual price of £699. If either of these prices is more than you can afford, there's always last year's model, which is just £499. But don't delay. When they're gone, they're gone. Come early to avoid disappointment. That is the end of part one. Eight. You will hear a brother and sister talking about a gift for their cousin. So, what do you think we should give our cousin Lucy for her birthday? She's just moved into her new apartment. I think she'd like a microwave. In fact, I've already had a quick look online and seen a few special offers. Shall we go and have a look in the big department store in town? What for? It's likely to be more expensive. And besides, it weighs so much. Can you imagine us trying to take it on the bus? OK, but we'd better hurry up and order online, or they might not have any left. Now listen again. So, what do you think we should give our cousin Lucy for her birthday? She's just moved into her new apartment. I think she'd like a microwave. In fact, I've already had a quick look online and seen a few special offers. Shall we go and have a look in the big department store in town? What for? It's likely to be more expensive. And besides, it weighs so much. Can you imagine us trying to take it on the bus? OK, but we'd better hurry up and order online, or they might not have any left. Nine. You will hear two colleagues discussing their holiday travel plans. I finally decided on my holiday plans. What about you? Well, actually, I'm going to Greece next week. And you? We're off to the coast of Ireland in a month's time. Uh, going by car and the ferry again? Yes. You must love it. You go there every holiday. I do. And this time we're going for a fortnight, not just a week. So that's exciting. Wouldn't it be better if you flew? You wouldn't waste so much time getting to where you're going. We like to be able to get around easily once we're there. Now listen again. I've finally decided on my holiday plans. What about you? Well, actually, I'm going to Greece next week. And you? We're off to the coast of Ireland in a month's time. Uh, going by car and the ferry again? Yes. You must love it. You go there every holiday. I do. And this time we're going for a fortnight, not just a week. So that's exciting. Wouldn't it be better if you flew? You wouldn't waste so much time getting to where you're going. We like to be able to get around easily once we're there. Ten. You will hear a man talking to a friend about a fitness training session. Hi, Joanna. I'm afraid I can't make today's fitness training session. Oh? Are you OK? Well, I'm not too bad. I had this really awful cold, which took about a week to get rid of. Fortunately, it's over now. But my doctor told me to take things easy anyway. I don't know if I mentioned it to you. I need to have an operation on my foot on Friday. It's nothing serious, though. I'll be back at fitness training very soon. Oh, good. Well, you take care then. See you. Now listen again. Hi, Joanna. I'm afraid I can't make today's fitness training session. Oh? Are you OK? Well, I'm not too bad. I had this really awful cold, 
which took about a week to get rid of. Fortunately, it's over now, but my doctor told me to take things easy anyway. I don't know if I mentioned it to you. I need to have an operation on my foot on Friday. It's nothing serious, though. I'll be back at fitness training very soon. Oh, good. Well, you take care then. See you. Eleven. You will hear two friends talking about a play they've just seen. That play was really great, wasn't it? I thought the second half was a bit less interesting than the first. You could predict exactly what was going to happen. Really? I wasn't sure how it would end. The actors were excellent though, weren't they? Well, actually, I expected the performances to be a lot better. I must say, though, the costumes were brilliant. I think you're a bit hard to please when you go to the theatre. So why don't you choose the next play we see? OK. Well, I hope you'll like what I choose. Now listen again. That play was really great, wasn't it? I thought the second half was a bit less interesting than the first. You could predict exactly what was going to happen. Really? I wasn't sure how it would end. The actors were excellent though, weren't they? Well, actually, I expected the performances to be a lot better. I must say, though, the costumes were brilliant. I think you're a bit hard to please when you go to the theatre. So why don't you choose the next play we see? OK. Well, I hope you'll like what I choose. Twelve. You will hear two friends talking about a film and its soundtrack. What are you listening to on your phone? The soundtrack to that film, Smash. Have you seen it? Not yet. I've got it. We could watch it together. It'd be a nice thing to do after a hard week of work. Cool. I'm free on Friday. I mean, the film's aimed at kids, but I think you'll like it. The music's definitely popular with a much wider range of people. Some of it's good old-fashioned jazz and soul, but it's got a sound that makes you want to get up and move. It's definitely as good as the film. Now listen again. What are you listening to on your phone? The soundtrack to that film, Smash. Have you seen it? Not yet. I've got it. We could watch it together. It'd be a nice thing to do after a hard week of work. Cool. I'm free on Friday. I mean, the film's aimed at kids, but I think you'll like it. The music's definitely popular with a much wider range of people. Some of it's good old-fashioned jazz and soul. But it's got a sound that makes you want to get up and move. It's definitely as good as the film. Thirteen. You will hear two friends talking about the news. Why are you always looking at your laptop? I'm checking what's happening in the world. I make sure I do it every morning before anything else. So do I. I need to for my job, but I much prefer reading a real newspaper. But online, I can focus on what I'm really interested in, rather than all the stuff about celebrities and sports stars. I just don't care. Hmm, there's a lot of that, but I must admit I always enjoy reading about their lives. Do you? Well, there's actually more about that sort of thing online. Now listen again. Why are you always looking at your laptop? I'm checking what's happening in the world. I make sure I do it every morning before anything else. So do I. I need to for my job, but I much prefer reading a real newspaper. But online, I can focus on what I'm really interested in, rather than all the stuff about celebrities and sports stars. I just don't care. Hmm, there's a lot of that, but I must admit I always enjoy reading about their lives. Do you? 
Well, there's actually more about that sort of thing online. That is the end of part two. Now look at part three. For each question, write the correct answer in the gap. Write one or two words, or a number, or a date, or a time. Look at questions 14 to 19 now. You have 20 seconds. You will hear a guide giving some information about a walk in the countryside. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mike, your guide on today's walk in the beautiful countryside here. I'm sure you'll want to know how long the walk will take. Well, there are two possible routes, one of which takes four hours and the other five. We'll be taking the longer one as it has fewer hills. We'll be at our destination by around two. Right, things to be careful of. It's a fairly easy route and there are good paths. There are some steps to climb in some parts, but in this dry weather you won't slip. Please look out for bikes, though. Cars aren't a problem, as our route avoids public roads. I hope you've all remembered to bring lunch with you, as the cafe at the visitor centre will pass is closed for repairs. Instead, I've picked a great place to eat by the lake. We'll also have a shorter break at the waterfall, so you can take photos. For people who are interested in wildlife, there's plenty to see. You'll be pleased to know that there are lots of butterflies at this time of year. The forest is famous for its frogs, but they stay hidden away during the daytime, unfortunately. At the end of our walk, I'm afraid you won't find a shop selling souvenirs or anything like that. There is a castle, though. It's not very big, but it is interesting, and a nice place to rest after a long walk. Finally, you'll want to get back to where we started. There used to be a railway station in the area, but it's been many years since a train went through there. There's a bus service, although you may have to wait a while. A taxi driver will never come this far out of town, so that's really the only option. Right, let's go. You will hear a guide giving some information about a walk in the countryside. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mike, your guide on today's walk in the beautiful countryside here. I'm sure you'll want to know how long the walk will take. Well, there are two possible routes, one of which takes four hours and the other five. We'll be taking the longer one as it has fewer hills. We'll be at our destination by around two. Right, things to be careful of. It's a fairly easy route and there are good paths. There are some steps to climb in some parts, but in this dry weather you won't slip. Please look out for bikes, though. Cars aren't a problem, as our route avoids public roads. I hope you've all remembered to bring lunch with you, as the cafe at the visitor centre will pass is closed for repairs. Instead, I've picked a great place to eat by the lake. We'll also have a shorter break at the waterfall, so you can take photos. For people who are interested in wildlife, there's plenty to see. You'll be pleased to know that there are lots of butterflies at this time of year. The forest is famous for its frogs but they stay hidden away during the daytime, unfortunately. At the end of our walk, I'm afraid you won't find a shop selling souvenirs or anything like that. There is a castle, though. It's not very big, but it is interesting, and a nice place to rest after a long walk. Finally, you'll want to get back to where we started. There used to be a railway station in the area, but it's been many years since a train went through there. There's a bus service, although you may have to wait a while. A taxi driver will never come this far out of town, so that's really the only option. Right, let's go.
Now look at part 4. For each question, choose the correct answer. Look at questions 20 to 25 now. You have 45 seconds. You will hear an interview with a young poet called Laura Dixon. Laura Dixon, you've already had two books of your poems published. How did you become interested in poetry? Well, my dad loves literature, so there were always lots of poetry books on the shelves around the house. I used to spend hours looking at them. I'm pleased it happened that way, because there needs to be more time spent on it at school. I think students would enjoy it. And how did you decide to turn your interest into a career as a professional poet? I started doing some classes in journalism. I showed my poems to the woman running the course. She was a well-known reporter on a national newspaper, and she suggested that I enter a poetry competition. I did, and two months later, found out I'd come first. That's when I knew I wanted to do this full time. So, I hear you've just finished a new book of poems. What's it about? You never exactly know what poems are going to be about until you start writing them, and my previous books have included my thoughts about architecture, ancient and new. In this one, though, I focus on connections with the people I'm close to. I actually started out with the idea of writing about global warming and the environment, which is very different to what I produced in the end. Your poetry is very modern. Do you read poetry written a long time ago? Yes, I do. The words and style are often very different from modern English, but you soon notice how carefully the poems have been put together. I think they took more skill to write than many modern ones do. And you've also started teaching poetry at a university recently. How's that going? I'm certainly enjoying it, even if I'm not always sure how much my students are actually learning. Thankfully, the other teachers have a lot more experience than me and are happy to share their ideas. I was warned about how much preparation there'd be, so that wasn't too much of a shock. And what are your plans for the future? Well, there's a poetry festival soon, and the organisers have asked me to read my work at it. I'm hoping to turn some of my previous work into songs. After all, hip-hop and rap are just poetry with a tune. New poems come into my head all the time too. I'd get worried if I had to stop writing because I'd run out of ideas. Thank you, Laura Dixon, for joining us. Laura Dixon, you've already had two books of your poems published. How did you become interested in poetry? Well, my dad loves literature, so there were always lots of poetry books on the shelves around the house. I used to spend hours looking at them. I'm pleased it happened that way, because there needs to be more time spent on it at school. I think students would enjoy it. And how did you decide to turn your interest into a career as a professional poet? I started doing some classes in journalism. I showed my poems to the woman running the course. She was a well-known reporter on a national newspaper, and she suggested that I enter a poetry competition. I did, and two months later, found out I'd come first. That's when I knew I wanted to do this full time. So, I hear you've just finished a new book of poems. What's it about? You never exactly know what poems are going to be about until you start writing them, and my previous books have included my thoughts about architecture, ancient and new. In this one, though, I focus on connections with the people I'm close to. I actually started out with the idea of writing about global warming and the environment, 
which is very different to what I produced in the end. Your poetry is very modern. Do you read poetry written a long time ago? Yes, I do. The words and style are often very different from modern English, but you soon notice how carefully the poems have been put together. I think they took more skill to write than many modern ones do. And you've also started teaching poetry at a university recently. How's that going? I'm certainly enjoying it, even if I'm not always sure how much my students are actually learning. Thankfully, the other teachers have a lot more experience than me, and are happy to share their ideas. I was warned about how much preparation there'd be, so that wasn't too much of a shock. And what are your plans for the future? Well, there's a poetry festival soon, and the organisers have asked me to read my work at it. I'm hoping to turn some of my previous work into songs. After all, hip hop and rap are just poetry with a tune. New poems come into my head all the time too. I'd get worried if I had to stop writing because I'd run out of ideas. Thank you, Laura Dixon, for joining. That is the end of part four.